Frank Lloyd Wright Boulevard, gourmet exotic cuisine at its best. AARP in Phoenix thinks today should be your day. So get active and help keep Phoenix in motion or get involved in improving your community. Take on today and every day. Learn how at aarp.org slash phoenix. In the Hasidic enclave of Borough Park, Brooklyn, EMT jobs have traditionally been held by men. Us religious women can't do this? Of course we can do it. Meet a group of women taking matters into their own hands. 93 Queen. Tonight at 11.30 on Arizona PBS. Explore new ideas and new worlds here on Arizona PBS, a community service of Arizona State University. Programs on Arizona PBS are funded in part by a gift from the estate of Maddie Butner. For more information on how to include Arizona PBS in your estate plans, call 602-496-8888. Coming up next on Arizona PBS, life and world. In a time of change, where can you find in-depth reporting and thoughtful analysis? Washington Week on PBS. Join moderator Robert Costa. When I was at the Capitol this week, I encountered the same... And a panel of award-winning journalists. You're seeing a divided nation and you're seeing... For insights and perspective. Tonight there was a key development in the You Senate won't find Congress. anywhere else. What a week. Washington Week. Friday night at 7 on Arizona PBS. Support for Arizona PBS comes from viewers like you and from... Support comes from Arizona Business Bank, a co-biz financial company, providing personal service and experienced bankers for your business and personal banking needs. More online at azbizbank.com. Support comes from Citizens Clean Elections Commission, your source for unbiased voter information. Watch an upcoming debate and vote informed this election. Visit azcleanelections.gov slash debates for dates and ways to watch. From the Cronkite Studios in downtown Phoenix, this is Cronkite News. The Senate Judiciary Committee has scheduled a hearing for sexual assault allegations against Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh. We take a look at the next steps moving forward. Plus, Governor Doug Ducey says the border strike force is a success. How recent drug seizures have helped support his claim. And candidate commercials ahead of Arizona's primary election may not be the best way to learn about where they stand on issues. We look at how debates may be more beneficial. Cronkite News starts now. Evening and welcome to Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Ashley Mackey. And I'm Jake Trybolski. Thank you for joining us. Just about an hour ago, the Senate Judiciary Committee announced it will hold a public hearing next Monday on the sexual assault allegations against Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh. Arizona Senator Jeff Flake is calling for the Senate Judiciary Committee to delay the vote so that an FBI investigation can look at the claims. Flake says they should wait until they talk to the woman accusing Kavanaugh of sexual assault. Christine Blasey Ford came forward with allegations against Kavanaugh and identified herself publicly yesterday. She said he assaulted her at, the, at a high school party in the 1980s. Kavanaugh denies the allegations. The White House issued a statement saying Kavanaugh, quote, looks forward to, hearing, to a hearing to clear his name. The committee was set to vote on Kavanaugh Thursday. Unquestionably, there needs to be a delay in the confirmation vote. The only next acceptable step is a full, fair, complete investigation of these very serious allegations. It is an accusation which the ranking member of the Committee of Jurisdiction has known about for at least six weeks. Known about for six weeks. Yet chose to keep secret until the 11th hour. Neither she nor any of her Democratic colleagues chose to raise this allegation during the committee staff's bipartisan background calls with the nominee. President Trump says he is okay with the delay because he wants the Supreme Court nominee to go in at the highest level. 
The, the debate over Kavanaugh's confirmation spilled out onto the street between the U.S. Capitol and the Supreme Court building this afternoon. That's where Cronkite News reporter Lillian Donahue is live with the latest. Lillian? Thank you. A torrential downpour was not enough to stop a large, noisy crowd of anti-Kavanaugh protesters outside the Supreme Court today for over three and a half hours. Now, they weren't just protesting the recent allegations of sexual abuse. They were also protesting other rights like women, immigrants and workers' rights. They say that if he wins a seat on the Supreme Court, all of their rights are at stake. It seems that Brett Kavanaugh will not defend the Affordable Care Act or the 130 million Americans with pre-existing conditions. There is no other way for me to interpret Kavanaugh's statements other than to think he is coming after my daughter and seeking to deprive her of access to the care that is keeping her alive. If you are a woman, you are what's at stake. If you are queer, you are what's at stake. If you are transgender, gender queer, gender non-binary, gender non-conforming or agender, you are what is at stake. If you've ever had a transaction with big business, you are what is at stake. If you're a person of color, an immigrant, have a disability, or you're a young person, you are what is at stake. The protesters say that this nomination is being rushed. They want a pause. But for now, they want answers to other questions about Kavanaugh's record. Live in front of the Supreme Court, Lillian Donahue, Cronkite News. Meanwhile, Arizona Governor Doug Ducey discussed the success of recent drug seizures by the Border Strike Force today in Tucson. Ducey said the Border Strike Force operation is continuing to help keep dangerous drugs out of Arizona's communities. Most recently, Ducey said DPS seized hundreds of pounds of methamphetamine and one pound of fentanyl during three separate traffic stops last week. I want you to think about that for just a moment. With just three traffic stops, the Border Strike Force seized now nearly 225 pounds of methamphetamine and enough fentanyl to kill 227,000 people. DPS Director Frank Milstead spoke about the efforts after Ducey, but both of them immediately left the press conference without answering any questions from reporters. Governor Ducey is just one of the many elected officials running for office right now. It's hard to miss the number of campaign ads running, but where do the candidates stand on the issues you care about? Tanaya Williamson reports, for that, you may want to catch a debate. There, but there are two, there's a difference between the Red for Ed movement and the Arizona Education yeah, Association. I, I understand that, but I think, mm -hmm. I think that's a distinction without a difference. Every pronouncement I saw on Red for Ed had Joe Thomas, the president of the AEA, standing next to Noah Carvelis, the self-proclaimed socialist, who is your campaign consultant. Even in an office like the superintendent of public instruction, debates can get heated. But there's a call to focus more on the issues and less on the mudslinging. Remarkably, um, we're all Americans. Uh, but you wouldn't guess it by the political games that are going on now. We are so polarized right now as a nation. Joseph Garcia is the director of Latino Public Policy Center at the Morrison Institute for Public Policy at ASU and says that civil discourse is missing in the world of politics. So what happens in politics now is whichever party is in the control, whether it be in the legislature or it be in Congress, uh, pretty much steamrolls over the minority party. For some, voting can be a very daunting task. Entities like the Citizens Clean Elections Commission exist to help make that an easier process. The Citizens Clean Elections Commission was created by voters in 1998. And what the Clean Elections Act uh, provides for is a number of different uh, programs designed to bring voters into the system and try to push corruption out of the system. The commission also sponsors debates. Thomas Collins believes that even though it is frowned upon by some, that mudslinging is just what some people are looking for. Voters will tell you that they don't like mudslinging. Uh, political consultants will tell you that voters may not like mudslinging, but voters respond to mudslinging. But the commission does work to enforce campaign finance rules and provide some funding to those running for office who buy by their rules. In Phoenix, Tanaya Williamson, Cronkite News. You can watch three debates on Arizona Horizon this week. Tomorrow night, the candidates in Congressional District 3 will face off. On Thursday, you'll hear from candidates from the Corporation Commission. And on Friday, Congressional District 6. On those evenings, Cronkite News will be seen at 4.30.
Today is a special day for the United States. It's Constitution Day. More than 200 years ago, the Constitution was adopted. But coming up on Cronkite News, the story of how more than 45,000 new U.S. citizens get to celebrate their citizenship today. And how one Arizona photographer is making a difference in the lives of those that are homeless in downtown Phoenix. Join any award-winning CNN anchor Anderson Cooper as he receives the 2018 Walter Cronkite Award for Excellence in Journalism, attracting industry leaders from the media, politics, business, and education. The award luncheon is the Cronkite School's signature fundraising event. Tickets for the luncheon ceremony on Wednesday, October 17th at the Sheraton Grand in Phoenix are available for sale at cronkite.asu.edu slash luncheon or call 602-496-0482. I'm Judy Woodruff, anchor and managing editor of the PBS NewsHour. The journalists of tomorrow face a fast-changing media landscape, but quality news remains vitally important to our communities, our country, and our world. At ASU's Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communication, students learn solid, reliable reporting, holding the powerful accountable, and rebuilding the public's trust. The Cronkite School and Arizona PBS PBS, preparing the next generation for a stronger future of journalism. As journalists at Cronkite News, we report on stories that matter to you by focusing on the local impact. We dig deeper and work tirelessly to keep you informed. Live in Wickerburg. Live in Los Angeles. In Cleveland. In Washington. In Louisville. From Jerusalem. Live in Philadelphia. From around the world to right here in Phoenix. At Cronkite News, we report the facts and stick to the truth. President Donald Trump praised the contributions of Hispanic and Latino leaders today. Following months of deep political divide between the president and Hispanic lawmakers, today's comments came as part of a White House event to mark the beginning of Hispanic Heritage Month. Hispanic Americans are not only living the American dream, but their incredible efforts are unlocking the American dream for citizens all across our land. You're doing a fantastic job. Constitution Day, the 231 years ago when the U.S. Constitution was adopted. To celebrate U.S. citizenship and immigration services, plans to swear in about 45,000 new citizens this week in ceremonies across the country. Cronkite News reporter Lillian Donahue was at one ceremony where a group took the oath next to the Constitution itself. Today, you become part of We the People. For 364 days out of the year, the Constitution sits in this room of the National Archives, preserved under glass and dim lights to protect the fragile document. But for one day out of the year, the quiet room comes to life as people from around the world become citizens, swearing their loyalty to the U.S. in front of the Constitution. It took me like five years to, to become a citizen. I was very lucky since the moment I just put my feet in, that, in this country. It also took five years for Tamar Lalua, who immigrated to the United States from Georgia to gain citizenship. She says it's more important now than ever to show immigrants who are proud to be United States citizens. There is so much debate going on over immigration. I think it's important to show that this is what this country is made of. This, this is why this country is so strong because it's diverse, it has so many people from so many different backgrounds and nationalities, all under one roof. Today, 31 people from 25 nations around the world took the oath of citizenship. During the ceremony, former U.S. Ambassador to Japan, Caroline Kennedy, challenged not just the new citizens, but all Americans to uphold the ideals of her late father, John F. Kennedy, and his passion for patriotic service. Every citizen, no matter how old or how young, how long you've been here or when your ancestors came, needs to help create a better America. In Washington, Lillian Donahue, Cronkite News. As part of that week of ceremonies, naturalization ceremonies are also planned this week in Maricopa and Santa Cruz counties. It began as an assignment in a college photography class, but turned into something way more meaningful. Reporter Gabriela Baquera introduces us to one Valley photographer whose work with the homeless led to a gallery of characters. One, two, three. 
Samuel McDonald is a photographer and a former employee at Andre House, a ministry to the poor and homeless in downtown Phoenix. All right, good lighting. Now he volunteers his time to take black and white portraits of guests at the Andre House. For many, this is the first or only photo they have of themselves. It's nice to hear from people say like, oh, like, I really love the pictures I have of myself now. Terry Clark says this will be the first photo with his dog named Dirt. When she passes, I'll still have a loving memory of my dog. And other people can see how it was with my dog. Pretty, huh? So pretty, daddy girl. The portraits hang on a wall leading into the dining room in the Andre house. The idea of, hey, let's bring our guests in and like put portraits of them on the walls and make them feel like there's something that is worthy of being uh, photographed. Over the years, the photo collage has grown and the people have come and gone. On any given day, it could be the last time you see one of our guests for either a bad reason or a good one. Each photograph comes with its own story. We used to call him Dave the Butler. That's what he preferred to be called because he's always helping people out if you needed something. He passed away uh, last year. Um, and that was one of those times where like my work that I do now and my work here at Andre House kind of intertwined. McDonald now works as a death investigator for the Maricopa County Office of the Medical Examiner. The detective called me and said, hey, can you come out to this thing that's happened? And I was like, all right, sure. So I get out there and it turned out to actually be him. So that was a little bit uh, strange. McDonald has also seen lives change for the better. The first time Wilfredo Gonzalez had his photo taken by McDonald was as a guest. You know, he really liked it too. He do it like with his heart. Now, when Gonzalez has his photo taken, it's as an employee of the Andre House. It was a big surprise, you know, you know they was interested in the job I do. So, um, and I become one of them. Although he can't find them all, three of the photos of Gonzalez now hang on the wall. My another photo for some kind of reason disappeared from here. Probably I have a fans. <laughs> in downtown Phoenix, Gabriela Becerra, Cronkite News. Since leaving the Andre house, McDonald still comes by to take photos every once in a while. He will post signs around Andre house, letting people know when he will be setting up. Guests can usually pick up their photos the next day. Lower water levels in Arizona are spiking up concerns. Coming up on Cronkite News, Lake Mead's water levels are dropping drastically, and Arizona may be put under water restrictions by 2020. I'm tracking another day of sizzling temperatures here in the valley, but also some big changes on the way. We'll dive into those details next in your full forecast. I'm Ted Simons, host and managing editor of Arizona Horizon. The 2018 election season has arrived. Join us for primary and general election debates. Right here, meet the candidates and hear their positions. Arizona Horizon, your source for what matters most this election season. Only on Arizona PBS. Millions of people die every year from drinking dirty water. I would never have felt I had the ability to do something without ASU pushing me. We built filtration systems out of local materials with the people to see those kids drink clean water for the first time. It's the most rewarding feeling that you can ever have. I went to ASU because I wanted to change the world. The thing I never would have expected is how the world would have changed me. I'm Jose Cardenas, host of Horizonte. Each week we bring you experts and community leaders to discuss the issues that are vital to our community here in Arizona. We cover the stories that affect and inspire us and our families and talk to the newsmakers who shape the communities where we live. Horizonte is your source and your voice for what matters most here on Arizona PBS. If you're looking for one show that tells you what happened that day in the world of business, it's NBR. We saw a classic shipwreck. Nordstrom's opening store. Triple digit gains. Crude climbs. We're there to help our audience find new investment ideas. The market still has room to go up. Nightly Business Report is the longest running business television program in history. Weeknights at 1030 on Arizona PBS. While the remnants of Hurricane Florence are bringing heavy rain across the southeast, the biggest concern is turning to getting residents out of dangerous flood zones as rivers continue to rise. According to North Carolina's Department of Public Safety, there have been more than 900 rata rescues, and they anticipate search and rescues to continue throughout the next several days. 
North Carolina's Governor Roy Cooper says the next few days will be long, long as the flooding continues. We've been preparing for and living through Hurricane Florence for more than a week now. But this remains a significant disaster that affects much of our state. The next few days will be long ones as the flooding continues. The death toll from Florence stands at 24 beyond the catastrophic flooding in the Carolinas. Flash flooding and tornado risks were expected as far north as Pennsylvania. Water shortages are looking more likely for Arizona, all thanks to the fast sinking water levels at Lake Mead. You can see that bathtub ring that shows where the lake levels were. A 24 month study by the United States Bureau of Reclamation Lower Colorado Region Projects Lake Lake Mead's water levels will drop to a critical level. There's a 57% chance water restrictions will be placed on Nevada and Arizona in 2020. Between the water supply aspect and the flood control aspect that Lake Mead provides, um, it really is the lifeline of, of uh, these southwestern states. Right now, Lake Mead's current elevation is just over 1,079 feet, just four and a half feet away from being cut off cutoffs being issued. The Phoenix Water Services Director is calling for a 12% increase in water rates over the next two years. To fight the issue, we will bring you an in-depth look later this week on Cronkite News. Excessive heat warnings were issued for Phoenix all throughout the weekend. But there's no such warning in place today. So Jordan, will we be able to see our temps drop anytime soon? There are some big changes on the way for the valley, and we have one more day of triple digit heat for tomorrow. But as we take a look at the pattern change behind me, high pressure is going to move off to the east, and low pressure will move in from the northwest, which is all the proper ingredients to help get storm chances here in the valley. So that's exactly what we're going to see setting up for Wednesday. So jumping straight into future cast, we're going to see that we'll keep things dry tomorrow and hot, of course. And then with cloud cover building in Wednesday morning, we'll be also begin to see storms fire up from the southeast. Those will move up the I-10 and become more scattered across the valley as well as majority of the state through Wednesday afternoon. So a couple things to keep in mind here in the Valley of Storms were to fire up. Blowing dust being the main threat, there is still some uncertainty, of course, with the main threats that are coming in, but those are bound to change as the forecast nears itself for Wednesday. But right now we're tracking 106 degrees at Sky Harbor right now and highs tomorrow. We're going to be talking the same thing. 106 here in downtown Phoenix, 105 in Paradise Valley, 103 in Deer Valley, 101 in Cave Creek for tomorrow and lows across the state being the coolest spot up to the north in Flagstaff and along the rim 60s in Prescott, Sedona and Payson for the valley and areas off to the west. We'll see those upper 70s to low 80s for tomorrow morning and highs out there are rebounding to those triple digits, of course, with 90s in Prescott, Sedona and Payson, and then 79 degrees being that coolest spot in Flagstaff for tomorrow. So again, as promised, the cooler temperatures are on the way for Wednesday. We'll see 96 on Wednesday, 30% chance of storms on Wednesday, lingering down to 20% for Thursday and Friday. And then those highs down into the upper 90s finally as we head into the weekend with those low temperatures even down into the mid 70s as well. In the Cronkite Weather Center, I'm Jordan Evans. Stretching is out. Getting into a freezing cold chamber is in. Coming up on Cronkite News, one Phoenix sports team has found a new way to help their bodies recover using sub-zero temperatures. I'm Matt Berry, ESPN Sports Center anchor and graduate of ASU's Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communication. With its bachelor's and master's degrees in sports journalism, the Cronkite School is preparing the next generation of sports journalists to tell stories that matter, stories that excite, inspire, and inform. Cronkite immerses students in covering sports at all levels in one of the country's top sports markets. It's this hands-on experience under the guidance of award-winning sports media veterans that shape the top journalist of tomorrow. lifeblood of the mission. Human beings are a curious bunch. What are we going to see when we get really close? Wow. Just because an idea is crazy, it's not necessarily wrong. We were on our way. You 
don't get anywhere until you've tested the limits. That carries an intensity you can't imagine. You could hear people just, whoa. Oh my God, absolutely spectacular. It's a rush. We ask a lot of our heroes. We are at a remarkable moment. We're going farther than any exploration ever has. It appears Arizona Cardinals coach Steve Wilkes is doubling down on his plan to keep his current quarterback at the helm, even after yesterday's blowout. The Cardinals were blown out by the Rams 34 zip and the loss may be calling for QB has many calling for QB Sam Bradford to be exiled to the bench. But today Wilkes said the team has a lot of problems to overcome and that any changes will involve scaling back the playbook instead of rearranging the personnel. Collectively, we got to get better you know, and uh, try to find a way to, to rectify these problems and, you know, be a little bit more productive on the offensive side of the ball and then still try to uh, get off the field on the defensive side of the ball to give these guys more opportunities. So um, it's just not that one position. Wilkes said any potential personnel changes will be communicated to the players by today so they know going into practice. The Cardinals take on the Chicago Bears at home on Sunday. Voluntarily getting into a sub-zero temperature chamber after a tough workout might seem extreme, but that exact method is letting Phoenix Rising players avoid injury with USL playoffs approaching. Cronkite sports reporter Ricardo Avila gives us an inside look. Phoenix Rising is putting a spin on the term home field advantage, battling the extreme heat of Arizona summers with the extreme cold that comes with cryotherapy. I hate the cold, but... This is, a, this is a very good process. It helps your body recover a lot faster than not doing it. It's three, three and a half minutes of just sacrificing. If you get to those three and a half minutes, I bet you you'll feel 10 times better after you're done with it. Feeling 10 times better is what cryotherapy is all about. With their season lasting up to 10 months and frequently playing in temperatures well above 100 degrees, players know recovery is key to their success. It's a great experience for us because it gives us the opportunity to recover to the best of our ability and so that we can perform at the highest level that we do. I'll just get in there, you'll be fine. Trust me, it's, it's, you'll feel great afterwards, so it's all worth it. Even though temperatures in the cryo chamber can drop to negative 170 degrees Fahrenheit, and some might see that as torture, it definitely has its benefits. And what we find is that we're able to get the guys back to 100% faster than when we were not doing cryo. And also, we're able to train at a higher level because um, their tank gets filled up or their energy gets filled up faster. Whole body therapy is essentially just for reducing inflammation, um, increasing range of motion, all those things. Because when you're practicing and playing games, uh, it's hard on your body. Your body's trying to recover. As Rising enters the final playoff push, the team remains hopeful of surpassing last year's first round elimination. In Scottsdale, Ricardo Avila, Cronkite News. Cronkite News is proud to be the news division of Arizona PBS. Here's what's coming up on Arizona Horizon and PBS NewsHour. On the next Arizona Horizon, a new exhibit takes a look back at historic Scottsdale. And we'll hear what's next for the Phoenix Corral. That's on the next Arizona Horizon. I'm Judy Woodruff on the next news hour, the latest on flooding and damage in the aftermath of Florence. That's Monday on the PBS News Hour. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thank you for joining us. For top Arizona stories anytime, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org. Support for Arizona PBS comes from viewers like you and from Deanne Griebel, now with Moores and Cabot Investments, serving investors since 1890, proudly supports quality programming on 8 Arizona PBS, 480-725-9602. In the Hasidic enclave of Borough Park, Brooklyn, 
EMT 